Brilliant. Hi, guys. So this is Natalie Jackson from Lifestyle Social. And we've been working with Natalie for the past few months in respect of producing influencer generated content for her agency. Uh, so we'll get started by uh, Natalie. Uh, tell us a bit more about yourself and what it is you do. Yeah, so I'm the founder of Lifestyle Social. Um, we've been going for about three years now. Um, and we have a mix of clients and they all fall into the lifestyle sector. Um, so all of our clients are pretty brand conscious. They're really protective about the brand image. Um, we offer two different services or two different kinds of services so you've got the organic side um, which is organic social media management social media strategies and then we've got the paid advertising side so previously we'd only really dipped into the influencer side of things on the organic side um, but social plug have started to help us outreach to influencers and integrate that into our paid social strategies and campaigns and that's been really beneficial to us so far Amazing. And just touching on influencer marketing in general, I mean, obviously the, the buzzword's been about for the last few years now, but it's now reaching up to like a 12 billion industry by 2023, which is incredible. Uh, just to, tell us about what interests you about the influencer marketing and why you felt the need to then start incorporating that into services. I think it, it is just the cliche of that people buy from people. Um, so I think that, you know, if it's a real person talking, it's a lot more authentic, it's a lot more believable than, um, you know, like a pre-rehearsed, staged, um, real setup. And I think it's the same from where, um, like, social media has been moving away from images and into video as well. Because um, I think images can be very, you know, well, they're obviously static, but then they're staged and you can't see what's going on behind those images. But in video, it's kind of, you know, it's like a 360 view, you get the full picture. And I think you're seeing a lot of influencers um, kind of, you know, opening up and being a bit more real and a bit more vulnerable because of that, because, you know, they're, they're having to produce video content to keep their audience engaged, keep things up, and they can't perfect it. They can't, you know, the, the, the rate that they need to be producing video, they can't be making it look as glossy as it used to be. So, um, and, and then I think people are just relating to that a lot more. Um, and, and then that's kind of having that conversation and it's like a two way thing as opposed to kind of, you know, on one side to another between Absolutely. the consumer and the promoter. Absolutely. Because the influence has already got the trust for their audience, essentially. So being able yeah. to incorporate your brand into that influencer message, then it's a lot more receptive, isn't it? So talk, talk to me a bit more about the struggles that you had with influencer marketing. Um, I know obviously collaborating with, with social plug and, and basically how we helped you streamline and scale that process. And obviously you, you're super busy with your organic content and your paid social talk to me about, you know, the solution that you found in social plug in terms of being able to collaborate with us on the influencer side. Yeah. So basically um, I think, I think the main thing is just being time poor. I think, you know, it really helps kind of filter through. It's a very manual process. If um, especially when your client mixes, got different clients under you know in different sectors and kind of needing different things um finding those real niche because there's no point in just finding an influencer it has to be the right influencer so finding the right niche influencer that is right for the brand to then outreach and promote your brand um is you know it, we know how to do it, but actually finding the time to do it, it's, you know, it, we need something that's more efficient and more productive um, than us just trawling through. We need someone that has a database or connections like you guys already. Um, and then you can we can just leverage off that and then leave that to you to coordinate and we just plug and play with it. Absolutely. So, you know, a massive time saving factor of being able to collaborate with influencers at scale there. And in terms of obviously the IGC we produced, um, you know, we, we worked with quite a few influencers in respect of being able to produce content uh, at scale and speed for you. Talk, talk to me about how you made use of that content. Um, we use it in two main ways, really. So we, we, um, we've done giveaways with you guys. Um, so we've collaborated and we've used the influencers to talk about the brand and the giveaway. And then that gives leverage and, and encourages the audience on their platform to then come over to the brand's accounts and start following them. So that's really good in getting the reach up, but then also making that reach convert into followers for the brand. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, we've used it um, in the paid ad campaign. So in the back end of Facebook and business manager, we've set up um, 
paid adverts, but we've used that influencer video for the adverts. And we've seen that that's been a lot more effective than any other adverts that we've done before. So it actually has, um, it, I guess it's just, we've seen it organically work. And when you use it on paid ads, it just amplifies that message. And it's just proved to us that actually, like we, it just gives us that chance to reach more people and by reaching more people in an all in a natural way as opposed to as a traditional adverse it's just really really effective yeah I think you, you were really smart about it as well because you didn't just necessarily collaborate with influencers to produce content which you obviously repurposed for your organic feeds where you did see more engagement but the fact that you you know ran competitions uh, with these influencers uh, and encouraged their followers to to go ahead and obviously uh, follow the brands that you were working with. It was a really clever way of actually, you know, acquiring customers at a really low cost uh, and yeah. making sure that the followers you were getting were actually relevant to the brands that you're working with. And I thought that was a really smart way by doing competitions and, and getting those followers over to your page. Yeah, as customer as a, a customer acquisition. So that was one strategy. I know obviously you've used that content for your for your marketing channels, be that on your organic feed, and and most importantly, what what I think you've you, well, I'm most impressed with, and I'm sure you are too, was was the paid media. So talk to me about the paid media side and what you uh what you found as the most valuable side of using our influence generated content for your paid ads. Yeah. So um, previously we we hadn't used influencers in the paid campaigns. It had just been um, the client's graphics or photography um, and then, you know, a bit of design from ourselves, um, like graphic design, trying to bring it to life with a bit of video, a bit of movement in those graphics. But we'd never actually used a video of an influencer. Um, we'd use video in the form of the founder and things like that, but we'd never used a video of the influencer um, with the I think I think the thing with a just a little side note as well, the thing with the, the influencer is that they actually have um, the respect and the trust of the of the audience already. Um, so just by associating yourself with the right people just puts you, you know, 10 steps ahead anyway. Um, but yeah, we we um put those um the video campaign from the influencer talking about the products into business manager. And then we targeted the audiences which we know convert. So, you know, we targeted the people that have the interests and the demographics of what, you know, we've already learned. Um, and it was just a really good test to put that against what we've currently done um, with all the other graphics and photography that was saying, and then putting that against with, with the video campaign um, of the influencer. And yeah, the, the return on ad spend was higher from the video with the influencer um, than the other campaigns. Um, so it just shows to us that people are responding to this and people are, you know, it drove more traffic to the website, it reached more people um, and it converted more sales. So I think those three key metrics are the metrics that we want to achieve. Um, so it was kind of like job done. It's like we need to be doing more of this. Absolutely. And that's fantastic. And for anyone watching, uh, just because some idea of the numbers, I know that we wanted to start really score, uh, small because obviously we were skeptical about um, about our influence generated content. And, you know, I think for many brands of, of all shapes and sizes, testing new markets and new strategies, you do go in small and then you want to obviously scale on that. So just to give an idea of numbers for anyone watching, I know that you spent 300 quid on the ad. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And then how much did you return? Oh, I know it was um, £6.20 return on ad spend. So quick maths, Reese. Yes, yeah, so I think you generated over £2,000 worth of sales from a 300 quid. It week. was over 2000 yeah. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Uh, and and that, that was just... in quite a short space of time as well. How um, short was that? I think it was four weeks for the campaign. Amazing, amazing. So that's just in four weeks, obviously taking that IGC, implementing it into your paid media strategy, you know, putting a small 300 quid budget, then obviously returned over £2,000 worth of sales, which is obviously great reassurance for yourself that, you know, obviously IGC is outperforming other types of media um, and obviously something to scale upon as well, which is, is really cool. I think for anyone else watching this, just to, to summarize the video, um, if a potential brand or agency was thinking about using our service, what would you say to them? I'd say give it a try like what we did um i think that you know with any kind of marketing the only way that you learn is by testing and you don't rule 
anything out till trying it um and i think that they'll be pleasantly surprised like i have been so um you know there was elements that i was unsure thinking or oh, maybe it needs to be slightly more polished or slightly more prescriptive from us because it's for the brand and it, it was on brand and um, but it, it was a little bit more authentic than what we've previously done but I think you know it's just stepping outside that comfort zone and kind of practicing what you preach like you know that on organic works better these days so actually putting that into ads and um, you know don't be too scared to do that and um, because that is what people buy into and if anything works organically, the chances are that it is going to work in ads as well. So I think that was the massive learn, like takeaway for me. Um, and I think that, yeah, like just just give it a go and, and start small like we did, you know, just test for a short period of time, start small. And once you've got the results and you built up that confidence, then you can start rolling it out wider and big. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I hope that's been insightful for You're anyone welcome. watching in respect of, of what we offer here at Social Plugin and the returns that you can get from testing our service. Um, and okay, and, uh, that's the video for now. So thank you so much, thank Natalie. You. I know that we're going to have another chat thank about you. how we can work on other campaigns. So I'll end the video now.